Hi, here we are now, chapter four, and uh, this is where Wallace explains to you how thought, everything that is created is created from a thought, and also he gives you the advice, do not try and work out how this happens. You drive a car, you don't know how the internal combustion engine works in complete detail, you just trust it's gonna work. That's the same with these things. Actually, let them work for you, and then you can discuss it. And Wallace says in the uh, actual chapter that provided that you do everything that you're told in this chapter, you cannot fail, okay? So don't go looking for explanations as to why or how. Just do what it says, form your thoughts, create your vision, and I uh, hope you enjoy this chapter. Thought is the power that can create tangible riches from the formless substance. The formless substance is a thinking substance, and any thought received by the substance will be created. The original substance moves according to its thoughts. Every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought in the original substance. As the formless stuff thinks of a form, it takes that form. Likewise, as it thinks of a motion, it takes that motion. That is the way all things were created and are created. Thinking of a circling system of suns and planets, it takes the form of these bodies and moves them as it thinks. Thinking of the form of a slow-growing oak tree, it moves accordingly and produces the tree, even though it may take hundreds of years for the tree to fully develop. In its creation, the formless substance seems to follow established timescales. For example, the thought of an oak tree does not create an instant fully grown tree. It just starts the process along established lines of growth. Every thought of form held in the thinking substance will create that form along established lines of growth. The thought of a house impressed on the formless substance would not necessarily cause the instant creation of that house, but it would align all the creative energy that exists to start the creative process. If there were no existing channels through which the creative energy could work, then the house would be formed from the original substance along established lines of growth. No thought or form can be impressed upon the original substance without causing the creation of that form. All people have the ability to think and create mental images. Everything that is ever made is always the result of a thought. Nothing can ever be made unless it is thought about and visualised first. To date we have confined our work to the work of our hands, applying manual labour to create forms and also modify existing forms. We have not considered the possibility of creating forms by impressing our thoughts on the formless substance. We have so far made little or no effort to utilise and cooperate with the formless substance. We do not believe that we can do what we see the formless wonder doing. We just continue to modify and recreate existing forms and give no attention to the possibility that we can produce things by communicating our thoughts to the formless substance. I propose to prove that any man or woman can communicate with the formless substance and will show you how. Initially, we must lay down three fundamental propositions. First, we assert that there is one original formless stuff or substance from which all things are made. All the seemingly many different elements are but different presentations of one element. All the many forms found in organic or inorganic nature are but different shapes made from the same stuff, and this stuff is the thinking stuff. A thought held in it produces the form of the thought. Thought in the thinking substance produces shapes. A human being is a thinking centre capable of original thought. If a person can communicate his thought to the original thinking substance, he can cause the creation or formation of the thing that he thinks about. To summarise, there is a thinking substance from which all things are made and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates and fills the interspace of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. A person can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. It may be asked if I can prove these statements and without going into detail I answer, yes I can. Both by logic and experience. Reasoning back from the phenomena of form and thought I came to one original thinking substance. 
and reasoning forward from the thinking substance, I came to a person's power to cause the formation of the thing he thinks about. By experiment, I find the reasoning to be true. Here is my strongest proof. If one person who reads this book gets rich by doing what it tells them to do, that is evidence in support of my claim. But if every person who does what it tells him to do gets rich, then that's positive proof until someone goes through the process and fails. The theory is true until the process fails, and this process will not fail for everyone who does exactly what this book tells him to do. I have said that people get rich by doing things in a certain way, and in order to do so, people must become able to think in that certain way. A person's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. To do things in the way you want to do them, you will have to acquire the ability to think the way you want to think. This is the first step towards getting rich. To think what you want to think means to think truth, regardless of appearance. Every individual has the power to control what he thinks, but it requires great effort to think of the truth rather than the thoughts suggested by the appearances. To think according to appearances is easy, but to think of the truth when it is in conflict to those appearances is difficult and requires the expenditure of more power than any other thing when called upon to do so. There is nothing that more people fail at than the sustained and consecutive thought that is contrary to the appearance. Every appearance in the visible world tends to produce a corresponding thought in the mind. This can only be prevented by holding on steadfastly to the thought of truth. To look upon the appearances of poverty will produce corresponding thoughts in your own mind. Unless you hold to the truth that there is no poverty, there is only abundance. To think health when surrounded by the appearances of disease, or to think riches when in the midst of the appearance of poverty, requires power. But whoever can acquire the power becomes a mastermind. That person can conquer fate and can have anything he or she wants. This power can only be acquired by accepting the basic fact which is behind all appearances, and that fact is that there is one thinking substance from which and by which all things are made. We must then accept the truth that every thought held in this substance becomes a form and that people can impress their thoughts upon this substance so as to take form and become visible things. When we acknowledge this, we lose all doubts and fears, for we know that we can create whatever we want to create, and we can get whatever we want, and we can become whatever we want to be. It is imperative to believe and understand the three fundamental statements given previously in this chapter in order to move on. You must ignore all the other preconceived ideas and concepts of the universe and dwell upon these statements until they become your firm belief. If a doubt comes to you regarding these statements, ignore it. Do not listen or get into arguments where people teach or discuss contrary concepts to these beliefs. Do not read other teachings on these subjects until your belief and faith are secure. If you get mixed up and confused at any time, all your efforts will be in vain. Do not ask at this point why these things are true and do not try to speculate as to how they can be true. Simply take them on trust. The science of getting rich begins with the absolute acceptance of the foregoing statements. Well, there you go. That was it. That's how powerful your mind is. But until you actually formulate the vision, you cannot create anything. But my little addition to this is that your vision has got to be something that you believe. So your belief has got to come back to your core thought. Providing that you've got belief and faith, everything is possible. Okay, look forward to seeing you at chapter five. Thank you.